true faith and false religion. That will be the topic and the discussion we will have today. I want to say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to each and every person out there viewing this live transmission, listening to the podcast, YouTube channel, etc., etc., etc. Continuing with our Akhida series, there are many religions in the world. Each of those religions has its own followers. Some of them account for hundreds upon millions of people, but numbers alone cannot be an indication of what is truth, what is false. There are millions and millions of Buddhists and Hindus in the world, but both of those are religions full of idolatry. Many of the world's religions have some similarities, and many of the world's religions have differences. But for the most part, they agree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the earth. And they agree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for his creatures and actively directs events in this world. Once you observe the details of each and every faith, this is when you start to see the differences and the ways about they manifest themselves. There are monotheists who only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or only worship God. And they call upon none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they call upon none but God. They do not call upon the idols. They do not call upon false gods. Nor do they call upon saints or anything else for that matter. And then there are polytheists who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they fail to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. They fail to worship him alone purely without mixing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with invented deities and invented idols. In the Holy Quran, chapter 12, verse 106, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and most of them believe not in Allah, except while they associate others with him. There is no doubt without a shout of a doubt that among the world's religions that there is one and only one that's acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his worshipers. There is without a shout of a doubt a religion other than which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept and the followers of which alone will find their good works and their worship 
accepted through this religion, this religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God's whomever he wills and whomever he pleases to his religion from among those whom he knows to be good and to be pure. And whomever he pleases, he allows to overcome their own pride. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will turn away from my sons those who are arrogant on the earth without right, without a reason. People walk around arrogant with their nose up high. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn away. And if they should see every sign, they will not believe in it. That's the mark of an arrogant person. The signs will be in front of them, but they will not believe in it. Their turning away is the desire they have for living eternally in this world or in the dunya, so to speak. While turning themselves away from the hereafter. Living for this world or this dunya is another type of religion around which most people believe in, living for the dunya. These individuals may associate themselves to a traditional religion such as Christianity, such as Islam, Hinduism, etc etc but they are completely absorbed in and they live for the affairs of this world and they forget about their affairs in the next world these individuals they do nothing whatsoever to prepare themselves for the hereafter. And these individuals are not even concerned with searching for truth in the deen or in religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says every soul shall taste death, every soul, and you will be paid your reward only on the day of resurrection. So he who is drawn away from the fire and admitted to paradise has indeed succeeded. For the life of this world is nothing but the enjoyment of delusion. Holy Quran, chapter 3, verse 185. Every named religion in this world is derived from the names of some created beings, except for one. That one religion is Islam. Christians have named their religion and their faith after Isa, alayhi salam, peace and blessings be upon him. But a fast fact, Jesus 
or Asa, alayhi salam, peace and blessings be upon him, was a Jew. So you've named your religion after someone that wasn't even part <laughs> of your religion. <laughs> Asa, or Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, alayhi salam, was a follower of the Torah, the book that was revealed to Moses, or Musa, alayhi salam, peace and blessings be upon him. Judaism is derived from the name of Judah. But can anybody tell me what was Judah's faith? Wasn't it the faith of Abraham or Ibrahim, alayhi salam, peace and blessings be upon him? Thus we can see the birth of new religions that occurred at the same time as the birth of Judah and the birth of Christ. The Buddhists take their name from Buddha, a statue. Think about this. What was the name of the religion at the time of Abraham, or Ibrahim, peace and blessings be upon him. Even though he was the father of many nations, was he a Jew, or was he a Christian? Y'all don't want the answers to these questions. <laughs> It was not likely that he was a Jew nor a Christian, the prophet Abraham. Since both Judah and Jesus were his descendants. And at the time of Abraham or Ibrahim, neither the Torah nor the Gospels had been revealed. So there's no way that he was a Jew and there's no way that he was a Christian. They came way after his time. If we were to say that either of these two religions, Judaism and Christianity, is the true faith, then what about those who died before the coming of the Messiah and those who never knew about Christianity. What of those who died before Judah never knew about Judaism? The answer to these questions is that we can be certain that all of the prophets sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his commandments. This is what they call Islam. They submitted and they humbled themselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before God. This is the meaning of Islam. And this way, we can know the religion of all the prophets through which they were brothers. It is this religion called Islam, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam does not derive its name from the name of any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creatures. It is not a mere name but it is an abstract noun. It is a kind of descriptive behavior. Whoever behaves in a certain way can be described as having these qualities of Islam. 
And whoever submits themselves totally to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abides by the limits by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set and proclaims his unconditional obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allies themselves completely with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these individuals are called Muslims. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not name his religion after any person, nor it is it dependent on the birth of any single person. Because the religion of Allah is the religion of all of humanity from Adam, peace and blessings be upon him, to the last person that will ever walk this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded that all his creation submit to him, saying, and do not turn your Lord or surrender to him before the punishment comes upon you suddenly. Then you will not be helped. All the prophets of Islam and all the prophets that were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they submitted humbly to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they were the first and the best to do so. This is why they are called Muslims in the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran says, Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he inclined towards the truth and submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was never one of the polytheists. The quality that is shared by all of the prophets is their submission and their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were the humblest of people before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They submitted to his commandments. They were brothers in one single faith. They committed themselves to this. And this is the reason why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the prophets are all paternal brothers. Their mothers are many, but their faith is one. They were on Tawheed. Before I end this lecture today, I want to give you some food for thought, something to ponder on and think about until the next lesson on Akhida. Satan or Shaitan was ordered to prostrate to Adam, but he refused to do so. And thus he became titled as the worst of creation. So tell me, what then of someone, a person, who is commanded to prostrate himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the prophet Adam, but this individual or this person refuses to do so out of pride. If you can't submit to the commandments in the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, think about it. The devil was the worst of creation and he was told to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Now if you don't submit to Allah, does that make you 
worse than the worst? Think about it. As always, we like to leave you in the safety and the mercy and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, check back as we continue on the series of Akhidah, correcting our faith, correcting our Akhidah, keeping us on the straight path. And inshallah, that path leads to paradise or to Jannah. We leave you by saying, Fi Aman Allah. <laughs>